All right, hi guys. Uh, let's discuss the AP Computer Science A 2021 FRQs. Uh, the first question over here is the word match class, um, which stores a, a secret string and provides methods that compare other strings to the secret string. We have to write two methods. This is your instance variable, which is a string. This is the constructor whose implementation is not shown. We don't have to implement that. The first thing is we need to implement the score guess method, uh, which returns an integer based on the parameter guess, which is a string, which is passed to this particular method. Um, what is the description in part A? Let's see that and let's see how we can implement this. All right, so coming back over here, uh, it says write the method score guess. And to determine the score to be returned, score guess finds the number of times uh, guess occurs as a substring of secret mm, and then multiplies that number by square of the length of the guess. Okay, so we have to multiply the length two times so that we get the final answer and it may overlap within secret. All right, we need to take into account that particular aspect. Now, um, we don't have to worry about the fact that the guess is an empty string or the length of guess is less because we can we can assume that that is going to be less uh, or equal to the length of the secret. So no edge cases to be um, taken care of. Let's see the first example. Uh, Mississippi over here is the secret word um, and they've given us four examples and the corresponding values that has to be returned by the score guess method. Um, so let's take the first example. The guess over here is I. So let's start at the zeroth position. We are going to stand at the zeroth position. And while standing at that position, we are going to look at as many letters as the length of the guess. So standing at zero, we are going to look at just one letter. Why? Because guess has only one letter in it. So we just, we're going to look at M. M is not the same as I. So I'm going to now repeat the process with every position of secret. So then I'm going to stand at I, then I'm going to stand at S, then I'm going to stand at S, and I'm going to stand at I, then S, then S, then I again, then P, then P, and then I again. Now, while we were going through the secret, the moment we encounter a part of the string, which is the same as guess, at that time, we will increase our counter. So initially, our count value was zero before we began. And as we go through each substring of secret, which matches the guess, we increase the counter. So at one, we increase the counter to one, then so on. So at zero, one, two, three, four. At four, we again increase the counter by one. So it becomes two. At five, at six, at seven, again, we increase the counter to three. At eight, at nine, and at 10, we increase the counter again to four. That's why the number of occurrences over here is four. And the final answer return will be four times one times one, which is four. Quite straightforward, easy to understand. Now, let's take at the second example because that's a little critical. So now I'm standing at position zero. Now standing at position zero, I need to look at three letters. Now, why do I need to look at three letters? Is because guess is of length three. So First, I'm going to look at MIS. Now, MIS is not the same as ISS, so I won't be increasing my counter. So initially, again, the count is zero again, um, and I will do a similar process like I did with guess of when, when the guess was I. So then I'm going to stand at position one. Uh, this is position one. At position one now, I'm going to get three letters again, so that's ISS. ISS is the same as guess. So over here, I'm going to increase my counter to one over here. Um, then the next thing is then SSI. SSI is not the same as ISS. Then SIS, SIS is not the same as ISS. ISS, ISS is the same as ISS. The count becomes two now. Now, the thing is over here, we keep on going ahead, but there's something very important that we need to be careful about. So this is four, this is five, this is six, this is seven. 
um one two zero this is sorry this is one I sorry messed up this two three four five six seven eight nine and ten the thing is I, when i stand at the position eight position eight the string that we get is ppi ppi is not the same as iss if i try to move to position nine it will give me an index out of bounds. The reason is if I try to take three letters from here, it doesn't exist. So that means if your guess is a three letter word, you need to first, you need to make sure that you stop at the it position. Over here, guess was a single letter word. You stopped at the last position over here. So that is very important for us to keep track of till how far your loop is going to go. So let's quickly look at how the method is going to look like. Let's see the method signature over here. It's public in score guess string guess. So we're going to write that again over here. So public uh, int score guess uh, string guess. I'm sorry, the handwriting is not very clear. Okay, so first thing we're going to initialize a counter over here. So the count will be initialized over here. So count is initialized to zero. Okay, um, then what we're going to go through is we're going to go through secret. So I'm going to have a for loop. Uh, I'm going to have starting from i is equal to zero. And now, and then I'm going to have i plus plus. I'm going to come to the condition of the for loop a little later. Um, it's going to be slightly tricky one. We'll come back to it a little later. Now, the thing is what we need to do is we need to get the substring. So what I'm going to do is secret from the secret part. We need to get a part of the secret string. So secret dot substring. I'm going to stand at the position I and I need to look at as many letters as the length of the guess. So I comma i plus i need to look at guess dot length so that is guess dot length okay now this has to if it is equaling guess so dot equals dot equals guess if it is equal to the guess then simply we simply do nothing but count plus plus that's the simple thing that we do over here, count plus plus. That's all. That's all that is there in the body of this particular loop. I'm going to just get this thing a little above. And yeah, okay. So I'm going to close the for loop over here. Now, the thing is in the for loop condition, we have to make sure that we don't really get index out of bounds. So over here, let's take this particular example, the second example that we saw. Now, Mississippi's length is 11 and we stopped, we need to look at the position eight. We need to look at position eight, but we don't want to go at position nine. So that means over here, 11 minus, the thing is over here, the length of the string is three. So this is secrets length minus guesses length. We need to go till that particular position. So I'm going to write I less than equal to, this is secret dot length minus guess dot length. Sorry for this particular thing. So that's how the thing is, we're going to make sure that we don't get index out of bounds. And finally, once we are done, we are going to return the final answer, which is nothing but count times guess dot length and times that again with guess dot length. So yeah, that's the method in part A. Now, what can be a probable mark distribution as per the past papers, especially the 2019 paper where even the first question was related to some kind of a count. Uh, this is what I feel might be a mark distribution. So this way over here, initializing a counter would be a uh, doing that would will be like one mark allocated for that returning the final count would be the one mark allocated for it uh, pretty sure um, getting this for loop right will definitely have a mark associated 
with it, one mark associated from it. Now, increasing the counter that would be probably a mark, um, not really sure. And now this particular if condition, now that's the main part of it. Now this part can either be one mark or two mark, not really sure, but definitely for sure at least a mark for getting the part of the substring. So this subsection, this part A, maybe out of five or maybe out of six. Um, and I feel one of the main places where people might lose out on is this if condition over here maybe, and, and definitely the for loop condition so that you don't go and get index out of bounds. That's one thing. And the other thing, it's a very common mistake that many of us really do is that okay, instead of equ equals, we write equal to equal to. So that might be another place where um, we might lose a uh, score over here. So this is part A. Um, so this was part A, probably the more heavy one. Let's move on to part B now. Um, so this is part B over here. So part B says that we need to find, write the method, find better guess and returns the better guess of its two string parameters, guess one and guess two. If the score guess method returns different values, then we return the guess with the higher score. If it the same value, then alphabetically greater guess is returned. Now for alphabetically greater, we need to understand that we use the compare to method uh, amongst strings to find out which one is there. So uh, this is the word concatenation is the secret. Uh, 10 gives a score of nine, nation gives a score of 36. And if it's fine word 10 or nation, it returns nation because nation has a bigger score than this. Uh, in the case of con and cat, they both give you the same score. And since con comes alphabetically, is alphabetically greater, uh, con is uh, returned over here. So let's go ahead and see the method signature and quickly do this. This probably is the easier of the two parts. Okay, so let's uh, public string find better guess. Okay, so that's public string, uh, public string find better guess. And very quickly, it's string guess one, comma string guess two. Okay. String guess one and string guess two. So first thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and get the scores for each of the guesses. So then let's take int over here score one. Uh, we're going to get score one and we're going to call the score guess method. So the score guess and we are going to pass uh, guess one to it. And similarly, I'm going to do in score two and I'm going to score guess again and I'm going to pass guess two to it. Um, so I got the two scores now. Um, now we need to check which one is greater. So if uh, score one is greater than score two, uh, if score one is greater than I need to return guess one. So that's the word which is giving the higher guess a higher score, so return guess one. Else, uh, if score two is more than score one, so score two is more than score one, then I return uh, guess two in this case. But now if they are the same, then what I need to do is I need to just find out which one is alphabetically after the other. So else, um, I simply can do over here. I can go ahead and say if score if guess one dot compare to guess two. Now, if it is alphabetically, if guess one is alphabetically ahead of guess two, then in that case, what happens is you give guess one is calling the compare to method, so you're going to get a positive value. So that's that's why we write greater than zero. Uh, if that's the case, then again you return. Uh, guess one. And of course, if it's the other way around, else you just return guess two. Um, so this is what I feel is the, uh, is what the second part would look like. Again, a quick mark distribution for this. This compared will definitely be a lower weightage method. So this might be like out of three or out of 
maybe out of four, uh, out of three or out of four, based on how the part A goes, it's out of five or six. So we are definitely doing these two lines will definitely be maybe one or two marks for sure. Um, getting this and getting this kind of a comparison done will be another one mark and doing this particular comparison will be another uh, one mark. Um, so depending on whether they will have one mark each for this one uh, for both the calls or just one of them, uh, that's how the thing will be. Um, so yeah, that's all that's there to question one.